Hi, my name is Soheb Katariwala, and I am an analytics specialist SA with AWS. Today, I'll be giving you an overview of the Amazon Redshift console. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've already created a Redshift cluster in your AWS account. If you do not have a Redshift cluster and would like a demonstration on creating one, check out the Getting Started with Amazon Redshift video, which is linked in the description below. I'll start with the AWS console and search for Redshift in the search bar. When I find it, I'll click on Redshift and I'm automatically directed to the dashboard page because I have existing Redshift clusters. On the left of the Redshift console, you'll see the navigation menu. At the top of the navigation menu, you'll see the hamburger menu icon with the three bars. When you click on that, it will expand your navigation menu and display all the options available to you, as well as any new notifications related to certain menu items. Let's start by talking about the dashboard and then go down the list of categories. The dashboard page gives you an overview of all your Redshift clusters and their health and performance at a quick glance to help you diagnose your problems faster. Here you can see a list of all the clusters in your account in the selected region. At the top, you can see the sum of total nodes and snapshots across your clusters. Below that, you will see any data shares that require authorization or acceptance. And below that, you can view any alarms that require your attention, followed by recent events related to your Redshift clusters. In the middle of the page, you can view key metrics for your clusters, including the number of queries and connections, disk space, and CPU utilization. Below that, you have a high-level view of query metrics across your clusters. Finally, at the very bottom, you will see recent announcements relating to new or updated Redshift features. Next, we can take a look at the clusters menu item. This is where we can see all the clusters in my account for this region. We can also see the health and performance of each cluster here. That includes the status of each cluster, the amount of disk space being used, CPU utilization, number of snapshots, and any notifications, as well as tags. This view can be customized by clicking on the gear icon. By doing so, I can include or exclude any visible columns, as well as the number of cluster, clusters visible on the page. I can also take actions on my clusters. By selecting a single cluster, I have the option to take action on that specific cluster. By selecting multiple clusters, I can take some actions on multiple clusters at the same time. By clicking on a cluster, I can navigate to the cluster details page. Here I can find additional details about my Redshift cluster, such as cluster identifiers, current configuration, and connection endpoints. Here you will see several tabs. Under the cluster performance tab, you can see advisor recommendations, alarms, and events pertaining to this Redshift cluster. Below that, you can view key CloudWatch metrics for your Redshift cluster. You can also adjust filters for your metrics based on the time frame and interval you're interested in. You can use the gear icon to customize which metrics are visible and how many metrics to display per page. In the Query Monitoring tab, you have additional subtabs. In the Query History subtab, you can view the currently running and recent queries on a timeline and in a list. Once again, you can choose the types of queries and the time frame of your interest as filters. In the Database Monitoring sub-tab, you can view additional metrics at the cluster level or WLMQ level over time. In the Workload Concurrency sub-tab, you can view additional metrics relating to workload concurrency over time. Next, we'll look at the Schedules tab. Here you can view scheduled resizes, queries, as well as pause and resume schedules on this Amazon Redshift cluster. In the Maintenance tab, you can view and modify cluster versions, maintenance windows and tracks, backup details, and see a list of snapshots for this cluster and any usage limits. In the Properties tab, you can view and modify database configurations, including the parameter group, database encryption, and audit logging. You can also view network and security settings such as VPC and, and subnet, and you can modify some network and security settings such as your security group and enhance VPC routing. 
You can view and manage IAM roles associated with your Redshift cluster. You can also view and manage VPCs in other accounts that have access to your Redshift cluster. Here you can also manage partner integrations for this Redshift cluster. You can also view the IP addresses for each of the nodes in your Redshift cluster and any tags applied to this Redshift cluster. At the top, I can also view clusters from other AWS accounts that I've been granted access to. I can also use this page to connect to my Redshift clusters using the query editor or JDBC and ODBC drivers. In the reserved instances submenu, we can also manage or purchase reserved instances. Next in the snapshots submenu, I can view and take actions on snapshots such as restoring to a cluster. Next, we'll go to queries. Here, I can see a list of queries and loads against each of my Redshift clusters and apply filters to view just the queries I'm interested in. I can click on a specific query and see detailed information about that query, including the full SQL and the query plan. Next, I'll go to the query editor. Here I can actually connect to a database in my Redshift cluster and query it directly through the console. I'll start by clicking the connect to database button to connect. Now I can either use a recent connection or create a new connection. When I select the use a recent connection radio button, I can see a list of connections available to choose from in the dropdown. From here, I can select the recent connection I'd like to use and click connect. I could also create a new connection. When I click on the create a new connection radio button, I first have to choose the method of authentication for the new connection. I can use temporary credentials to generate temporary database credentials based on IAM permissions, or I can use credentials stored in AWS Secrets Manager. To use temporary credentials, you first select your Redshift cluster, the database name that you would like to connect to, and the database user you would like to authenticate as. I can then click connect and start querying my Redshift cluster. To use the AWS Secrets Manager authentication option, I can either use an existing set of credentials that I've already stored in AWS Secrets Manager, or I can take my database username and password and store it in AWS Secrets Manager now and use that for my current connection as well as future connections. Here, I can also save my query or schedule it to run at a later time. At the top, I can view the history of the queries that I've run, the list of all my saved queries, and any queries that have been scheduled to run in the future. I also have the gear icon here to customize the columns that are visible, as well as the number of rows that are displayed per page. Next, let's look at data shares. On this page, you can control access to data shares that are created from your account, as well as associate data shares from other accounts to Redshift clusters in your account. Next, we'll go to the config menu item. Here you can do things like view and manage VPC endpoints, download database connectivity drivers, view connection URLs. You can also configure your workload management or WLM queues, manage tags, HSM connections, and subnet groups. In the workload management submenu, I can create and modify parameter groups associated with my Redshift clusters. I can also view and modify workload management queues. In the subnet group submenu, I can view or modify existing cluster subnet groups or create new subnet groups. I'll look at the manage tags submenu where I can find and tag resources such as Redshift clusters, snapshots, and parameter groups. Now let's take a look at the marketplace menu item. Here I can find Amazon Redshift partner products that are available through the AWS marketplace. Next, we have the Redshift advisor menu item. This is where you can see customized recommendations to help improve your cluster performance and reduce cost. Let's take a look at alarms. Here you can create new alarms or view any alarms that require immediate attention. 
You can also view all the alarms and take actions on them. Next, I'll look at events. Here you can see a list of all events pertaining to your Redshift resources. You can also create or manage event subscriptions. Finally, let's take a look at what's new. Here you can see recent announcements relating to new or updated features of Amazon Redshift. As always, if you have any feedback on the Redshift console, please use the feedback button on the bottom left of the page to let us know what you think. Thanks and have a great day.